Hi everyone, my name is Deepak Pandey and today I'm going to talk about multiplexing and its techniques in context of wireless and mobile communication. Okay, uh, let's get started. So we have been uh, studying multiplexing from our previous semester also. So I won't discuss very much about that, but I'll give you a brief with an example about what is multiplexing. So uh, first thing, what is multiplexing? Multiplexing describes how several users can share a medium with minimum or no interference. Okay, let's understand this thing with an example. Okay, uh, we have our roads where we drive Actually, this that is a, a physical medium to uh, go from one place to another place. So in order such that uh, no accident occurs or no interference between different vehicles driving in that uh, road occurs, we have our different different lanes. So this this example uses the technique of multiplexing. Multiplexing is not just a fundamental uh, uh, fundamental uh, it's not just a fundamental uh, mechanism. It is used in our day-to-day -day life. So uh, here I have explained to you what is multiplexing. We have different lanes so that we can drive and no accident occurs. We have divided our lane into different, uh, uh, we have divided our road into different lanes. That is multiplexing. So uh, next point is a a, we have uh, in, uh, in uh, a device called, uh, we have a device called multiplexer that divides the physical channel when uh, multiple senders try to send over a single medium and allocate one to each on the other hand, the multiplexer receives, identifies, and sends to different receivers. Okay, let's understand this uh, point with a uh, diagram. Like uh, we have various senders and inputs, various senders, and we have a device which is a multiplex uh, um, uh, multiplexer. Uh, okay which uh, receives the various and inputs from uh, receives various and inputs and which uh, send them to and and uh, one link uh, and channels and uh, we have another device deem uh, multiplexer which uh, uh, again extracts this in uh, output and converts them into n number of outputs there are various types of uh, multiplexing which can happen one to many many to uh, when we have uh, that that is simply things like we have n inputs and we have one uh, we are getting one output we have one output and we are getting n outputs so that that is what not i'm going to discuss i'm going to discuss about uh, multiplexing and its uh, te uh, techniques okay let's understand multiplexing in context of our wireless and mobile uh, 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 mobile communication and wireless communication okay uh, like uh, uh, if if we try to understand we have our radio stations which is been uh, listened by various users these stations uh, or fm stations send uh, uh, have their uh, some uh, frequency which we tune to and we listen so uh, what what is happening in here is we are listening uh, we have a, a uh, we have a single uh, source of station but we are uh, multiple users which are listening uh, to these uh, uh, station at the same time so this is happen this happens because of multiplexing so now uh, i have explained to you this uh, diagram now uh, let's see uh, what are the types of multiplexing. We have uh, four types of multiplexing, space division multiplexing, first one, second frequency division multiplexing, third time division multiplexing, and fourth is code division multiplexing. We'll uh, go, go through them one by one. So first we'll start with space division multiplexing. Okay, what is the space division multiplexing? Uh, like we have, uh, I, I'm I have used a word channel here. Channel simply means and a sender and receiver. Okay, don't get confused. Channel is sender and a receiver connected through a medium. Okay, in in space division multiplexing, every we have various channels. So every of the channel is assigned and space and an space is a three uh, consists of three dimensions 
one is code another is time and frequency and uh, the uh, third one is uh, frequency let's see with a diagram like we have uh, six channels k1 k2 k3 k4 k5 and k6 and e each of them channel uh, uh, we have been assigned with uh, some uh, space space is three dimension uh, first one dimension is code one time and frequency so these three uh, dimensions have been assigned to and uh, channel which is collectively called as space like uh, we have assigned in this diagram three channels have been assigned three spaces okay uh, i had explained you uh, the first point but let's uh, read it the task of multiplexing is to assign space time frequency and code to each uh, communication channel with a minimum of interference and maximum of medium utilization okay but uh, what is our task is to we should have minimum interference and medium uh, utilization should be more so we assign in such a way that um, minimum of interference take place and mini, medi, uh, maximum utilization of medium take place so how does the minimum of interference uh, take place the uh, it take place because of uh, <coughs> sorry guard spaces so we have been uses uh, we have uh, used guard spaces in uh, other multiplexing technique also so uh, let's move okay uh, what what about the uh, next three k4 k5 and k6 they also need some spaces we will have to assign some uh, code uh, time and frequency to uh, this uh, this also so they can uh, uh, communicate they can uh, they can be active so this is the same uh, same technique which has been used in old an analog telephone systems where every uh, channel channel means one receiver and one sender is connected through a copper wire so they they uh, can communicate this this was the uh, old uh, old principle used it is same in uh, uh, same in uh, sdm also where every separate uh, sender and receiver have their own space so what are advantages advantages uh, simply uh, a, a separate sender for each communication channel with a wide enough distance between senders so they uh, they have uh, so there is no chance of uh, uh, the uh, signals can collide or interface or interfere with each other so this advantage is, is if two or more channels want to uh, use establish the same space if they want to uh, have the same frequency they want to have same uh, they want to transmit data in same time and they use the same code then this is the problem this type of situation arises when uh, they want to broadcast things in uh, same uh, same city like same place so uh, this problem arises so in order to solve this type of problem we will be using uh, our uh, uh, further techniques which are frequency time and code division multiplexing let's move on to our further techniques so second is frequency division multiplexing what is frequency division multiplexing in frequency division multiplexing we divide uh, uh, our channel into some uh, frequency bands every uh, sender is given a frequency where uh, it, it can send or it can communicate like in last example uh, we uh, we if we go uh, if we understand it it with the context of a last example where we have six uh, channels now every channel is given its own frequency band so they can use it to send their uh, or uh, they communicate we, here we also have used guard spaces to avoid frequency band overlapping so uh, one example is uh, 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 radio stations we have uh, radio stations in our uh, city like if we take example of indore indore have its own uh, stations which uh, uh, have the, uh, their own frequency what we do is we get tuned to that frequency and we listen to that that radio channel enjoy music so th this is uh, one diagrammatic uh, explanation of the above so uh, what we have is we have uh, six channels and every of the six channel have their own frequency band they uh, send data through these band only 
what is advantages uh, uh, of this is that it it is not complex it's uh, it's very easy to implement and complex uh, easy coordination between sender and receiver just what the receiver have to do is receiver have to tune to its uh, receiver have to tune to uh, its channel and he can listen and uh, uh, disadvantages is that it uh, some 